Greetings fiber friends, welcome to The Natural Spinner. This is video four in the series following Mr. Bates's fleece through the whole process from shearing all the way through to the finished item. Before this video there was the washing and the shearing and skirting plus the farm tour visit where I first met Mr. Bates. So if you haven't seen those you may want to go back and, and watch. So I'm starting with the section of his fleece that I just threw randomly in the round baskets, as you can see. And I'm just pulling out the locks to parallel them up a little bit to make them easier to put on the combs. I do want to make a note about safety, and you will see me reach over the combs but I'm very comfortable around them. I've been using them for many years. I know the distance. I know how high I need to reach over without getting stabbed. I make very careful and deliberate movements around the combs, but I would recommend to you that you reach around the side and not over the top just to be safe. I usually do like to tease open the tips if I put it on and they're not quite open. Um, it's just my preference. You do not have to. You can just put the whole lock on and start combing after that. I do use my free hand a lot to help with static and just overall control of the fibers. And misting is helpful for static, but there's only water in my bottle. Adding oils to my fibers is just um, not my personal preference. I just use plain old water. You may notice that I comb mostly with the moving comb going from the bottom up, which is not traditional in any way. Most people go perpendicular to a stationary comb, or even if you have one in each hand. But it does work for me. It's more comfortable. I didn't start out doing it that way. I watched a lot of videos, and everyone was doing it the more traditional way, which I started doing, and I just slowly started turning the comb because it was more comfortable and because on these Valkyrie combs the tines have a very long tapered point to them the tines glide right through the fibers with no problem it, they don't really push the fiber up off the comb but because I am mostly taking it from the bottom I do sometimes have to push the fiber down just for more for ease of combing People come up with new techniques and ways of doing things all the time, so I don't see it as a big deal. It's not an unsafe method of combing. It's just easier for me. If I'm teaching combing, I do start with the perpendicular method, but then I do show other ways that it can be done, and people can choose what works best for them. Everyone has their own technique, their own special little finesse when they do combing and that's just part of the human condition you know we all like to do things differently and that's okay as long as it works as long as you get the result you want and you're being safe while doing it I say go for it and do it your own way and don't worry about it if you get to the end and the fibers won't quite come off. You can just hold them with your free hand like that and really gently just pull off the lengths that you want until you're down to the part that you don't want. I like to transfer the last pass onto the hackle and I can load up to three or four loads from the comb onto the hackle, which will give me a bigger bump or longer stretch of fiber for spinning, which I prefer. Just, it's a personal thing. You can make a bunch of tiny little nests if you want to, but I really love the huge, big bumps of fiber I get from dizzying off of the hackle.
moving the fibers up just keeps them from being compressed down towards the head and it will make them come off the comb easier when you're transferring them back to the hackle. Using my free hand is also a very tactile thing for me. I just love to have my hands on the fiber. So besides controlling static, it can help in other ways, but it just, it feels nice to touch the fiber all the time. There you go, from all jumbled mess to very straight and beautiful and, and ready to diz off into the top. I'm going along trying to make a very nice even top for spinning and every so often I'll stop and just check it and make sure that it is looking the way that I want it to look. So I'm at an angle which helps grab not just the longest fibers but also the more medium length fibers. Leaving just the shortest ones on there. You can go along and do all the longest ones first, and then you can diz back over it a second time and get all the medium ones. You can do it a third time if you want to. It's really just a preference. It depends on how long the fiber is, how you like to spin. You know, there's variables. So experiment, diz off in different ways, different lengths, see what you like best until you develop the technique that works best for either the project you're doing or just your general preference of spinning style. And then I'm just, unless I'm going to spin it right away, I'll just roll it up on my hand into a big ball or a bump or a nest, whatever you prefer to call it, and store it away in a bag, not compressed, um, for spinning later. Isn't that beautiful? Not a whole lot of effort either, especially with Romney. Romney comes up really fast. Now I've got the locks, the individual locks that I washed in lock form. You will get less waste uh, combing like this. You can just flick them on like that. You can hold each end and kind of do that and it, it opens it up just a little bit. You can tease open the ends once they're on there. You don't have to do that. You can just flick the whole lock on and go from there. I like to open the tips as much as possible. Sometimes it doesn't want to come off quite cleanly and it wants to drag a little. And you just put it back on and keep on going. You can see just how much less waste there is when you comb locks that have been washed in lock form. That is very little waste. And that was the first combing pass. This is the bag of that first combing waste that I keep separately with a label, as you can see. And for longer fleeces, you can comb them a second time if you choose to do so. And this I'm not even trying to pull out anything parallel. I'm just grabbing a handful of the fiber and lashing it onto the comb. You will get some really nice fiber out of this though. It'll just be shorter. And with a lot of variegated fleeces, a lot of times the fiber that is shorter is also darker. I find that to be very common in variegated gray fleeces. This will give you more combing waste. So you'll see that I can only get down so far and then I'm going to pull off the remainder. That's what I call second combing waste. That is also kept in a separate bag. 
because I have another trick that I use for getting the most usable fiber out of my fleece. I can also transfer all this to the hackle as well. Um, for this uh, demonstration video, I did not. It's just as pretty top, really. It's just shorter stapled. See how pretty? Nice and even. Got a little dark streak of the fiber in there. That's what, that's what's really nice about variegated fleeces. The color variables that you get are amazing. My little nest of second top. Now, this is what I do if I really want to get the most out of a fleece. I will take hand cards. These are Strotch, the smaller size of the regular um, teeth per inch spacing. I'm just adding the fiber. Look at all the bumps and the lumps that I'm going to be getting rid of or separating away. The goal is just to brush the fibers to the end, to the edge of the card so that I can then pull them off, which you'll see. I'm checking to make sure there's no dirt and it's all nice and smooth. Checking for any neps or any tangles or dirt. And then I'm just going to pull down and away from the card. And what works really well is that if you're next to your drum carter when you're doing this, you can just take that little handful of parallel fibers, lay them out on the tray, feed them into the drum, Carter, and you'll have a really neat and tidy bat. It's what I call cloud. Clean on the left, the leftover on the right, and that's what I call my final waste. So there you have combing Mr. Bates's fleece, and there are some beautiful bumps of fiber, and there's some already spun up yarn, a little sneak peek there. I hope you enjoyed this, and thank you so much for spending some time with me. As always, I love comments and questions. I hope you find some time for fiber today, and thanks so much for watching.